Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I have a special guest here, someone that's totally gonna help you if you are a new traveling mom. So if you're starting your travel journey, this woman is here to give you all the advice you need to know. So can you introduce yourself? Hi guys, my name is Sunet. So I'm the traveling mom boss. <laughs> and the reason why I call myself that is because I love to travel with my kids and I also love to like work while I'm traveling, making money and all that. Today I just wanna encourage you guys to travel with your kids. It's something that they're gonna remember for the rest of their lives. And I wanted to share that with my kids. I always wanted to travel, but I knew as my kids were getting older, I, know, I knew that they were gonna enjoy traveling with me. The things that held me back for a long time with traveling was money and I feel like that's a, a big thing for many people and I'm just here to tell you guys you can do it and Natoya and I are going to share some tips on how to be able to overcome the fear of not having money. Okay can you just tell my viewers what are the seven countries you went to? Sure so my kids and I went to Italy, we went to France, we also went to Czech Republic, Poland, Bel Belgium, Croatia. Ireland, did you say Ireland? Yes, Ireland is also one of them. France, okay, we both can't remember. I don't know. Okay, it's okay. we went to seven countries. In Europe, we yes. traveled Europe a lot. So I wanted her to tell you that because Europe tends to be expensive and we are budget travelers. So I definitely wanna share a lot about how we go about doing all of this with kids and on a budget. All right, so what's the first piece of advice you would give a new traveling mom boss or traveling mom like she doesn't know where to start when it comes to money preparing because this trip planning process can be totally overwhelming mm -hmm. even for me when i was traveling solo so i can imagine for a mom that has to worry about not her, only herself but her kids making sure we have they have enough money running out of money the child's uh, eating habits, just so many things. So what would you say is like your first bit of advice? Well, the first advice I would give you guys is just give yourself about six months of planning. So basically plan, give yourself six months to plan your trip and six months to let yourself know that you can do this. So the six months is gonna give you time to save money and then also decide where you're going. You might wanna decide where you're going within the first month, but it's just gonna give you a lot of time to prepare for it. And as you get closer to the date of your trip, you're gonna feel more excitement than fear of getting yourself into a whole plan, uh, uh, getting yourself into a whole international trip with your, your kids. So it's funny because I say for on my channel, you need at least three months, but it's good to see another perspective She's a mom of two kids and she says six months. So I like that you shared that. The reason why I said six months is because you're not just planning a trip for yourself only, you're planning with kids. And depending on what your financial situation is, you're definitely gonna need six months if the funds are not so high, or even if you're, you're making a good amount of money. It takes a lot of planning when it comes to activities, clothing the flights mm -hmm. the foods if you have picky eaters like she was saying i have two kids and both of them their eating habits is completely different and mine is completely different from them so it takes time to plan on what you're gonna what foods your kids are gonna eat what you're gonna bring on the flight the things to make your kids comfortable for a seven or 12 hour flight so there's lots of things to think about so that's why you want to give yourself six months to buy things you need, save the money you um save the money that you need for the trip, and also decide where you're gonna do it and what you're gonna do when you get there. I know this is already probably a lot already, but I want to let you know that Sunet has an absolutely free ebook for all of you guys. You can check, you can get that in the description. It's very be beginner friendly, and it's literally everything you need to know to take your first trip with your kids. Everything from packing to saving money, everything you need. Again, that's in the description. So this is the first part of a trip planning, preparation. So what are some of the things that you're preparing for when trip planning? Just You could just do a list of them, the top things you do your research for. The first thing that I usually look into is where I'm gonna take my kids. So I do research to see if the place that I wanna go to or the city that I wanna go to is kid friendly. I wanna make sure that there's enough activities 
are, are a variety of foods that my kids are gonna enjoy or restaurants that we can choose from for them to go to. And also to make sure that it's somewhere that's safe for tourists or even single parents with their kids. So I wanna make sure as a woman with two female children that we're gonna be safe when we go there. So I do a lot of research to decide where exactly I want to, that I wanna take my kids. I'm surprised you didn't say this, but she does a lot of research on how much things cost. Yeah, so I also want to make sure that it's a budget-friendly country for my kids and I because there's some countries that's amazing for kids, but things are just way overpriced or way out of my budget. So I also want to make sure that wherever I want to go to is going to fit in the budget that I'm creating for myself. So that, that would be my next step, deciding what my budget would be for the country that I decide I want to go to with my kids. Yeah, and I'll link... Um, one of our favorite websites in the description is called Numbio. Actually, I'm not 100% sure if that's how it's pronounced, but I've been using it for years. And it gets down into the nitty gritty of how much everything would cost from a cup of coffee to a taxi ride. All you have to do is plug in your city and it'll tell you how much everything will cost. So make sure you do your research before you book anything so that you can have like a solid plan. And that includes a savings plan, and that includes how much money you would need while in the country. So I do a research on a country I wanna to go to, or countries that I'm considering going to, and then I create a budget based on the places I decide I wanna to go to. And I choose the one that best falls in the, the my budget and the activities for my kids, transportation, things like that. So once I create my budget, then I decide to look for flights. So then I'll choose the country based on the cheapest flight that I find. And guys, this is the number one tip when budget traveling is to getting the cheapest flight because that's that's the one thing when trip planning that you can't really um, cheap out on because there's just one way of getting to from one continent to another continent. So it's really important that you pick your destination based on the airline ticket. So guys, notice how Sinet's trip planning process is she's kind of like balancing everything out. She's looking at everything all at once and then deciding if the country is for her. So say for our trip to Guatemala that we're gonna plan, we're gonna look at everything at once and then decide if Guatemala is best for us. So one other thing in regards to the flight, I'm also gonna choose the cheapest flight that offers baggage allowances. Since I'm traveling with my kids, I wanna make sure that the flight that I'm choosing allows um, baggage, free baggage, or the cost is not so expensive so that I have the option of either taking one check-in bag or two if it is too expensive. Or what we're planning on doing for Spirit Airlines is using the personal bag and being smart with how we pack it yeah, and that's also another great option that I recommend. If you can just take a personal bag, and the personal bag is not as small as you think. It's usually a pretty good size. So since kids are smaller in size, you can take so much more things for them inside of that personal bag. So you can also consider not having a check-in bag or a paid carry-on bag. So before you actually go and book that ticket, I would recommend check to see what type of activities are in that country because you wanna make sure that once your kids get there, they're gonna be entertained. So I try to look for a lot of free activities or budget-friendly activities. So I do those first, and then I look into paid activities. So I just wanna let you guys know that you can go to getyourguide.com or vider.com. There's other websites, but those are the ones that I usually go to to choose budget-friendly activities to do with my kids. So I wanna say that guys, there's so much free activities to do in many different cities. So you could just do a simple Google search on free activities to do in Paris or wherever you're going to with your kids. There's lots of things to do that's free with them and your kids are gonna love the free activities. Just don't tell them it's free because if, they, if they're a teenager and they know it's free, then they're, it's, it's not gonna feel the same. So yeah, they love the free activities. Um, some free activities I enjoy doing is walking tours. I like to walk around the neighborhood and then have like ice cream or go to the park or just do some like window shopping because there's so many things that the kids never seen. So they're gonna really enjoy that. Or just see like statues and monuments, but it has to be interesting for the kids. Like for example, I forgot the name of the statue um, in um, 
Splitze. Do you remember the name of it? That statue with the big guy. Is Diocletian? No, not Diocletian. Um, oh, I don't remember. He was a writer and an artist, but it was this big ginormous statue. And when you rub his toe, it's good luck. So that was fun for the kids and that was free. Yeah, we really enjoyed that. And each one of them took a turn rubbing the toe. There even was a line of form with yeah. people who were waiting to rub the toe. So that was a fun activity. So simple things like that, your kids are gonna enjoy it. And another thing I recommend is like, wherever you're gonna take them, do some research in the history of the, the, um, the neighborhood mm -hmm. or the monument, like she was saying, just to share the story with them because it makes it more interesting for them when you take them there. And guys, I just made a video and guys, I made a video a few days ago telling you guys, kids, you do not have to spend a lot of money on, on kids. I'll link that above and below. Kids are very simple creatures. <laughs> like they just want to hang out with their mom. They just want to talk to her and do things together and have like dollar ice cream. And they're going to be so happy. So I want to make that very clear that you don't have to spend a lot of money. But let's talk about some paid activities. We booked some, uh, a ton of activities in Croatia that were super cheap, like the dolphin tour. Yeah. You want to talk about that one? Yeah, so that tour was like super cheap and it was so much fun. I think we paid a total of what? What was it, like 70 I don't or remember. Or I don't know what it was. I don't remember how the total, but I think it was $33 for adults. Okay, yes. And it I don't was, remember for kids. It was about 17 or no more than $20 for kids. And it included food, uh, dolphin watching, and swimming on a private mm -hmm. island. It was amazing. And guys, there's so many activities like that on the websites that I said before. So just make sure you do a thorough look into the website and you're gonna find lots of options yeah. to choose from. All right, so after you do the research process, like what do you do next? So after doing my research, I'm gonna go ahead and book my ticket. Now that you found the most affordable flight, you're gonna go ahead and book your flight. And the next step after that is choosing your accommodation. Okay. This is important, so talk all about your process when picking an accommodation from safety to location, just everything. Okay, so I usually use Airbnb a lot because I feel like there's just a, a wide selection of places I could choose from. And also with Airbnb, even though you don't get the exact address of each location, you do get to have an idea of what the, the surrounding area looks like. So you can just do a little Google search and zoom in a little bit more on the specific city or the streets, the cross streets of where that Airbnb is. So you can decide if that's the best place for you. So I do a lot of research on that because I wanna make sure that the place that I'm staying at has a lot of things available for my kids and I to do or for things that I might need. Like let's say I need to make a run to the grocery store or even a pharmacy. I wanna make sure that things like that is close to whichever Airbnb I'm gonna choose. Yeah, and that's important because you could end up saving money at the end of the day if you're in a good location. Like for example, if you have a grocery store nearby, walking to the store instead of having to take like public transportation or the bus, or if you have activities right nearby, even, that, even if that's a public park. Because when we were in Pula, Croatia, we went to the public park with the kids and they loved it. Yep. And we were walking to restaurants right near our Airbnb and it was awesome. So picking up, making sure you pick a location that's best for you is really important. Yeah, and then you also cut, you also um, cut back on taxis or Ubers. So having things close by when you're with your kids is um, helpful because then you get to save money. To save money, I usually try to make sure that Airbnb has things that I would usually use at home. For instance, a stove, a washing machine, a dishwasher, Wi-Fi. Those are things that are helpful when you're traveling with kids. And also a smart TV. Yeah, definitely a smart TV because you wanna keep your kids comfortable and having access to things that they would normally have when they're home. And we, I just wanna make it clear that places that have all of these things, it doesn't mean they're expensive. So for example, when we were traveling all around Croatia, I think the most we paid per night for places with smart TVs, Wi-Fi, washer, um, none of them had dryers though. That was like a Croatian thing. Yeah, but no all dryers. of those things, I think we paid, the most we paid per night was like $65 a night. Yeah. And they were um, two to three bedroom apartments. So I just wanna make it clear, we're not spending a lot of money just because uh, 
they have all those things and you you don't have to worry about spending a lot of money too and the great thing about doing research on where you want to go to like a budget friendly country to go to visit with your kids is that you can sometimes book an airbnb that's really not expensive it can be a two to three bedroom like she said and be equivalent to the cost of a hotel a cheap mm -hmm. hotel and you're getting an actual whole apartment for the same cost and the thing is your kids love airbnbs they so don't. they prefer a really nice airbnb over any hotel like they love yeah. airbnbs okay guys so after you book your flight or accommodations the next thing you need to do is get travel insurance you guys know how crazy i am about having travel insurance because things happen so off the top of my head remember when you got that air infection yes and she had to go to the hospital yes which was an awesome experience in croatia by yeah. the way yeah. but like i said things happen so you want to talk about that booking travel yeah. insurance yes guys it is so important to get travel insurance and I'm telling you because I actually experienced what it's like to not have travel insurance. And I'm so happy that everything worked in my favor because it was so cheap to see the doctor. And that's because we were in Croatia. So I guess it's a little different when it comes to their healthcare system because other countries are not like that. So you may, you want to make sure that you have travel insurance. She usually books her travel insurance on um, Insure My Trip, which is a search engine. You want to talk more about that? Yeah, so Insure My Trip is a really great search engine to look into because there's many different types of travel insurance to choose from. And you're gonna just choose it based on what your needs are or how many people you're traveling with and just how expensive your, your luggage or the things that you're carrying with you. You wanna make sure that you have the coverage for everything and also think about what could potentially happen. So like we were talking about me getting sick with an ear infection, I'm happy that that was something minor, but you have to think about major things that could happen. Like if you're going on a hiking trip yeah. somewhere, you can fall, you can break your leg, or God forbid someone could die and you wanna make sure, God forbid, but you wanna make sure that you have coverage for things like that. So if there's an emergency evacuation that you may need, you wanna make sure that you get covered for that because those things are really, really yeah. expensive. So I'm sure my trip is a great website tool that you can use to um, cover those potential things that could happen. And also trip cancellation, trip delay, um, just a lot of things. There's just a lot of things that um, you need to protect yourself for. The next thing you need to do is sign up for the Smart Traveler Enrollment Program, which is simply just telling the United States government where the heck you're gonna be in case something happens, in case there's a, um, a government shutdown or uh, the government is invaded, I don't know. Something happens where the United States government has to come and find you. You literally just tell them where you're gonna be, when you're gonna be, so that, again, in case they have to find you and it's in an emergency. So I'll link that in the description as well. Okay, so next, can you talk about the supplies you need for your kids when traveling internationally, from plane supplies to while you're walking about the country, while we're hopping on a bus, going from one city to another city, just tell us what you what you buy to prepare your kids when traveling internationally. Well, one thing is I try not to buy too much. I try to keep it at a minimum, but I, I wanna make sure that I do have things that's gonna make my kids comfortable and also make them feel like they're they're um, make them feel like they're still at home away from home when they go to another country. So one thing is I make sure that my kids have all of the electronics that they would normally have at home. So my youngest one, she has her iPad. My oldest one has her phone. I make sure that they have access to free games and books and all types of different entertainment when we're on the airplane. And, and then also your net, their Netflix and Hulu subscriptions. Just things to just keep them entertained because they're kids. Yeah. So one tip I want to say in regards to the subscription services, you, you might want to download movies or shows, your favorite movies and shows for your kids. Because if you're on a long flight, you want to make yeah. sure they're in entertained the entire time. So prior to getting on that plane, when you're still home and you have access to fast Wi-Fi, make sure you download as much as you can, even for yourself, because while they're entertained, you want to entertain yeah. yourself too. So now what about when you're in the country? What supplies do you buy? Are like backpacks, shoes? Yeah, I make sure my kids have comfortable shoes. I try not to walk with too many pairs of shoes because they're just not going to wear it. At most, we take two pairs of shoes per person. That includes myself. 
but the main thing is to make sure they have comfortable shoes where the um, soles of it is like soft or comfortable yeah. because there's a lot of walking that's involved. And then I try to make sure they have like a um, backpack, a small backpack, or even like a purse that's still big enough to fit like your phone or things that you need. So I definitely make sure they have a bag because my youngest one, she likes to have snacks and like her juice or water. So I make sure that she has that bag or whatever it is. So when we're walking around or moving about, she has whatever she needs at her reach. Okay, and one thing Sinead does that I highly, highly recommend is that first of all, she buys good quality supplies and then she uses those supplies like over and over again for every trip. So those things include a really good backpack, a really good luggage, um, really good bags for the kids when they're walking around. And then she invests in a good headphone. So whatever your kid needs, make sure you buy really good stuff so that you can use it over and over and over again. That saves on the cost of future travels too. Yeah. All right, guys. So let's talk about when you're in country. Like, how do you go about managing your time, making sure you do everything that you want to do, finding restaurants. Let's talk about as soon as you land in that country, what are some tips for new traveling moms? Well, as I said before, prior to even getting there, I try to do some research and just write it out because there's when you get there, you're going to see there's so many things to do and you just don't want to do too much in one day because your kids are going to get tired. So I recommend just writing out a an itinerary yeah. of what you're going to do each day and try to stick to it because when you detour from that, you might end up wasting time and wasting money. So definitely plan your days and you can alter it a little bit when you get there, but I would definitely try to make sure you plan your days on what you're going to do and how much you're going to spend. And I keep it super simple. We both keep it super simple. I literally would take my phone and be like, Monday, go to the Louvre. Tuesday, um, free walking tour. Wednesday, and then I'll just send it to her through email or Facebook Messenger. Just as long as you have a plan, that's the best thing. And just take your time. Try not to do too much in one day because you want to actually remember what you did and just enjoy the experience and have your kids enjoy it as well. Yeah, and just be careful with those tours because we did go on a tour that was like 12 hours to Kirkwood National Park. And while it was fabulous, it was really draining for the kids. Just take into consideration if your kids can handle those tours. So next, so how about eating eating in a foreign country with your kids. How do you go about doing that? Two very picky eaters. Well, I do research on the restaurants that I'm gonna go to. I wanna make sure that they have many options available. So I like to try a lot of local foods and traditional foods and things like that. But I also wanna make sure that my kids are gonna eat the food that's there. So I make sure there's option for like grilled chicken, french fries, yeah. or even rice. So I, I make sure that those things are available for my kids. Or even soup, like they enjoy soup. Yeah. So once those things are on the menu, then we're, we're going. So just do research on where you're going. You wanna make sure that your kids are gonna actually enjoy the places that you're going to eat. When you see a food that your kid loves, just stick to it and keep getting it, okay? Make your life easy. So I can't think of any off, off, off the top of my head, but was there anything that the kids like loved in? Well, I know in, in Italy, they love the pizza. Yeah. I was gonna say pizza is like available everywhere and the pizza in Europe, the, the countries we've been to was just so good. So pizza is, um, a lot of kids like pizza. Uh, one thing that I found on almost every single menu that my oldest daughter love is chicken, like grilled chicken. Mm, yeah. She loves grilled chicken. So every restaurant that we went, to, well, almost all of them had grilled chicken. She got to try the grilled chicken at different restaurants and then they had grilled chicken breasts, which is her preference. So. She really enjoyed that. All right, now let's talk about being safe when navigating the country. You know, I'm always paranoid and always like, put your bag here and I'm I'm the crazy one when it comes to being safe. She's more relaxed, not in a way that she's not worried, but more like calm down, nothing's not gonna happen. So what are some tips you can give moms when navigating the country? So I just wanna say, just be vigilant, make sure you're keeping an eye on your kids. Um, the great thing about tra traveling, the great thing about traveling with my sister is that I usually tell her to keep an eye on one kid and I keep the eye yeah. on the other. Or I just speak to my kids before I go out. I just tell them like, guys, make sure you stay with me. This is not the time to be hiding underneath clothes <laughs> like my youngest one does. So I just let them know like, you just have to just make sure you stay with me. 
So I keep an eye on them and just keep them at hand's length. I just keep them at hand's length and try to enjoy ourselves. So try not to be too worried, but still make sure you remember that you're in a country, a foreign country. Yeah, make sure you have a bag that's just, um, it's big enough to carry the things you need, but just not so large where someone can reach in there yeah. and then you won't even feel it. And then also make sure you keep, if you have like a cross body bag, Put it in front of you. Those are the, I recommend those bags if you're traveling with kids yeah. because you can just put it in front of you and then try not to just wear it over your shoulder mm -hmm. because it can fall without you noticing or someone could grab it and run or even try to like um, distract you by mm -hmm. do it like grabbing your child and then you're not even realizing that it's really their the, the bag that they want. So there's so many things that could go wrong with that. That's why I recommend having a cross body and just making sure it's in front of you. I don't really recommend a book bag when you're going out with your kids. They can carry the book yeah. bag, but you don't want to carry a book bag with like important things like your passport because then they can easily go in the back and you won't even feel it. So crossbody is the best thing I recommend when you're traveling with your kids. Yeah, and then just make smart decisions. Don't walk down a dark alleyway with your kids. Eh? Um, don't just eat from any restaurant off the street. Like I've gotten sick like that before. Just make smart decisions. The same decisions you would make back in America or Canada, wherever you're from, make those same decisions abroad. So guys, uh, if you have any questions for Sinet, again, her channel will be linked below. If there's any topics you want us to talk about, please uh, leave that in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really, really hope this video helped. Make sure you like this video and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Bye.